We've saved a seat just for you. There's always room at the table. It's Coffee with the Pastor with your host, Andy McDaniel. Welcome to Coffee with the Pastor, everybody. As always, it is a joy and an honor to be with you today. Uh, We always try to do our very best to bring a conversation that will not only challenge you, but as I say each and every week, ultimately draw you closer to Christ. I am your host, Pastor Andy McDaniel. I've had the honor and privilege of serving the Lord for the last 23 years and currently have the honor of continuing that service here in Fayetteville, North Carolina at West Fayetteville Baptist Church. love to invite you to come and give us a visit, give us a try. If you're looking for a, a place to worship, maybe you're just passing through and you need a, uh, a spiritual recharge, uh, we'd love to have you come by and check us out. Uh, we're located at 2465 Gillis Hill Road right here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. You can learn all about us at WFAY bc.net. So again, it is great to be with you today. And as always, uh, always enjoy introducing our guest. And today we welcome our longtime friend of the show, Pastor Dale Pascal from Cliffdale Community Church. How are you, brother? Oh, it's great to be here, Andy. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, I'm, I really start to feel like you're Ed McMahon at this point. And uh, it's just always a pleasure, <laughs> always an honor that I can be here with love you. It. And uh, I just love it, man. Thanks man, for having me on. We're glad to have you back. You know, you were our inaugural guest uh, back over a year ago now. We've been doing this for well over a year now, and uh, so always excited to have you back with us. So, Pastor, I want to talk today uh, about where we draw the line. Now, that seems like a pretty generic question, uh, but but I think w- what I want to challenge our listeners with today is we, we live in a time, and I think we could agree on this, to where compromise is king. Mm. I mean, that, that, that's like, you know, and so, but, but what I want us to understand is while, while I don't want to, I don't want to travel the legalistic road, I'm not talking about that. But at the same time, I do believe that as believers, there's a place we have to draw the line because of our impact of our witness. First John 2 and 15 says, do not love the world or the things in the world. And if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Amen. Now that's Amen. a stout verse, right? Amen. But how important is it? Um, that we understand the difference between the things of God and the things of the world. Well, I think it's crucial. I mean, it's crucial. It's one of the, the big tasks set before us each and every day. We're called to live in the world, not be of the world, right? I mean, if we're, you know, why are we here? What's the, the existential? What's the meaning of life? Yeah, the big question yeah. everybody wants to know. The whole, you can go to go to your local Barnes and Noble and find a million books yeah. on the meaning of life. But I think if, if you're familiar with Scripture, you know, we're here for three reasons. We're here to glorify God, edify the church, and share the gospel. That's, that's it. it. So, you know, that's I think that's where we have to start. Understanding that anything that we do that compromises one of those three things puts us immediately outside of the will of God. And I'm with you on the, the legalistic route, and we could go down a lot of roads there. But, you know, it's just important that we understand that, yes, we want to love, we want to be kind, we don't want to be hateful or angry with anybody, but we're called to be different. We're called to be sanctified. We're Absolutely. called to be set apart. And, you know, we can show love and be understanding, but when we start to compromise on the Word of God, we're going to be outside of the will of God, and I don't think, that's where we want to be. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, again, you know, just, just like what you just said, we, we, we couldn't, and even the old saying is, you know, we, we want to live in the world, but not, not be of the world. And, and when we think about, again, again, about that, we can get off in the weeds with all the do's and don'ts. Mm. And a lot of people really get kind of, they kind of get confounded about that when it comes to the, to, to what we believe and, and, and what we practice in, in our churches um, about, well, that's all you talk about is what you can't do. <laughs> but, but that's not, I, I think the, the, the vital, vital issue is protecting our witness mm. because, because this, this requires drawing lines. Like you said, it, it's not about, it's not about I'm better than you or this or that, but Amen. it's like that doesn't work for me in the sense that that, you mentioned the word holiness. Uh, you know, that word itself, the word holy means separate and distinct. Mm. It means set apart. Amen. And when we think about a holy God, obviously he, he can't even look upon sin according, according to Scripture. But when we think about that in our lives, it's not about like the old Whalen Jennings song, towing the mark and walking the line. It's not, it's not about that as much as it is, am I mindful? Of, mm. Does this impact my witness because somebody else is watching 
Always, always. And and if you let the world know that you're a follower, you're a believer in our Lord and Savior, then there's even more eyes on you. Because unfortunately, we're in a place in the world where those things are, I don't want to say celebrated, but certainly discussed widely and, and, and broadcast loudly whenever a believer stumbles, whenever a believer oh falls. Goodness, Some of the great yeah. pastors that we've seen that have done so many good and led so many people to the Lord, and then they've fallen. They've sinned. Mm-hmm. Made no mistake about it, admitted to sin, and in some cases even been disqualified oh, yeah. from the ministry. But at the same time, does that discount all that they've done? And and are we not called as as brothers and sisters to pray for that person, to have compassion, to have love? Because, I mean, you know, there could be me or you in, oh, in yeah. a heartbeat. But I think what you said at the beginning of that question really is something. As a pastor, we get a lot. Pastor, is it okay for me to watch this? <laughs> pastor, is it okay for me to listen to this? Right. Pastor, is it okay for me to do this? Can I... Can I have a beer with dinner? And, uh, you know, for the Christian, I would say the answer is, what is the Holy Spirit inside of you telling you? If you're saved, are you convicted by what you're doing? Because if you're asking me the question, chances are you may be being convicted about what you're doing. And again, the standards are different. You or I would not have a beer with dinner because we don't want to cause a brother or sister to stumble. Does that mean that the average Christian can't have a beer with dinner? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that. It does mean they can't go out and get drunk. But if you're being convicted about it, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about it, then perhaps that's God saying, you know, this may not be what's best for you. Absolutely. Well, I think, again, you know, we think about protecting our witness. It's not about that I'm trying to project an image of to you that I'm perfect or that I can't or that I'm not human or that I don't, you know. Right. But, but I, th- I think what you say is, is great because a lot of people do wrestle with, oh, can I do this or can I, you know, whatever. I, I remember, and maybe you've seen this in your time in ministry, but I know I certainly have. And it's actually, I find it funny. Uh, you're in the grocery store <laughs> and, you know, you're going down the aisle and you see one of your members, you know, going and they see you and they turn and run the other way because they got a buggy full of beer. Amen. Or, or yeah. And, and I, I remember, I remember years ago, I was, I was at, at my local Mart uh, uh, grocery store and uh, and going through the thing and I saw one of my people and they looked at me like they'd seen a ghost <laughs> and so they turned and ran the other way and and, and I thought to myself you know I'm not, I don't want to embarrass them and I'm certainly not going to make a confrontation about it but but I'm I angled myself to make sure that we would run into each other <laughs> and uh and and what I said to them I said hey man uh it's none of my business what you do in your house that's right and I said but here's the thing if it bothers you seeing me, that's it. That may be God telling you something. Absolutely, it's, it's not about. I said because I don't want you to be embarrassed in front of me. I don't want you to feel like somehow I've let the pastor down, or I said, or that I'm going to look at you differently. I said because I don't. You, you know what you do and what your convictions are. Mine may be different, and I agree with you. For for me. And I am very protective, or I try to be very protective of my witness as a pastor because I do believe that Scripture says we are held to a higher level of accountability. Amen. Now, again, that does not mean that I am perfect by any means. I mean, you know, my wife could tell you. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and if I stub my toe hard enough, I probably don't say praise <laughs> the Lord. So, <laughs> you know, I wasn't cop for 13 years. <laughs> cops don't, <laughs> cops use profanity. Uh, it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. And, uh, but, yeah. Sometimes there's extra thing. With, but, but in all seriousness, though, I, I think what, what I want to challenge our, our audience to today is, again, it's not about you striving to 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 be perfect and i but it also i don't want it to be a wrestling match about what's right and what's wrong i think you said it perfectly what is god convicting you of absolutely you know we we talk about stuff like that and how where we go it's it's not so much about us being perfect as you said or putting ourselves up on a pedestal because that's certainly not it it's about understanding the fact that somebody may be struggling with something that's right we may inadvertently provide a crutch for someone yep. that's struggling with oh well you know it must be okay because i saw the pastor doing that's it right. everybody that has beer is not an alcoholic but some are yeah and if they see us doing it we may inadvertently cause a brother like the the, the bible story about eating the meat yeah we know there's nothing wrong with eating the meat right but if we eat if eating the meat causes somebody else to stumble then i will be more than happy to give up the meat absolutely you know because we don't want to do anything that would cause somebody to stumble but then you talked about conviction and we love to throw around that verse about how the body's a temple the body's a temple and we generally use it and i've done it too about working out and taking care of our bodies and what we put in our bodies that's a that's a fine application but also we have to understand that if you're saved you're indwelled by the holy spirit that's right which means wherever you are 
that's where the temple is. That's right. So if whatever it is you're doing, you wouldn't be comfortable doing at church, then perhaps maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Right. And sometimes that's a great place to draw the line. If, if you know, your body is a temple, that means that wherever you are, that is like the, the, the tabernacle of old with the mercy seat where, where God would come down and live amongst the people. Well, now, because the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, if you know Jesus as your Savior, wherever you are, you are the temple. That's right. So whatever you're uncomfortable with, if, if you wouldn't do it on Sunday morning <laughs> with me sitting there, then maybe we step back and, and look at things a little different. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that. And I, th I think, you know, the other measuring, and I heard, I heard a youth pastor one time years ago challenge his group of kids. You know, we talk about what we're watching or doing or whatever. He said, you know, imagine, imagine you know, as you're sitting in your chair or, or you're whatever, or maybe riding down the road listening to whatever, and Jesus was riding with you. Mm. Right. Because he actually is there. Because right. he said, I'm always with you. That's right. You know, are, are you mindful of that? And that's not to create guilt and condemnation or, or none of that kind of stuff. But it's if, if and I've been there. Maybe, maybe you have too. I mean, we're, we're about the same age. Um, you, you're somewhere, man, and, and you feel like somebody's watching. Mm. And you're by yourself. And you just kind of have that overwhelming sense of, well, something's not okay. Well, that that's just God giving you a little love nudge, you know, right. saying, hey, man, we don't need, you don't need that, yeah. you know, or, or, or whatever. And again, that's, I just want the, the people that are listening saying, you know, I, I, yeah, I felt that or I'm struggling with this or that. That's okay. Right. The, actually, right. The, the, the struggle is a good thing. Amen. Because that means something is changing in you to where it says, you know what? I don't need that mm. anymore, you know. Amen. And maybe it's the attic. Maybe it's the maybe it's the person struggling with whatever. There's all kinds of different things that we wrestle with, but but as we think about drawing lines and protecting our witness, I want to talk about guarding our hearts. Mm. You know, we we think about the importance of that, and, and you mentioned health and well being. Yes, how we exercise, how we eat, all, all those things are all those things can be important to a degree. But but I think sometimes we don't we don't imagine the protective nature of our hearts and minds mm. about what we're allowing in. L literally coming in. I, I, I we surrounded by so much stuff now, mm. man. We got I mean stuff on, on, on every on every corner. And uh, I'm just I'm just driving here to the studio, right? And there's a there's a big billboard out here for for a uh, law firm here in town. And, uh, and, and they specialize in divorce and, and, and family issues and stuff like that. And the picture on the, uh, on the billboard is just the lower half of, of a lady in fishnet stockings. I'm like, well, that usually causes oh, wow. a divorce. Why, why are you putting that? That's what is how we got in this trouble to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and maybe that was their subliminal message. I don't know. But, 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 but what are we, are we surrounded by so much stuff? I, I saw a pastor. I saw a commercial. Just a couple of days ago, and again, I'm I'm not an advocate of of a lot of the movies and stuff that are out there now. And again, it's, we're not talking about legalism, but it just it's just not for me, right. you know. Because but this is for a new horror film, right? Mm -hmm. And and while I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that stuff anyhow, but 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 it said this. The commercial said this was the most graphic, violent, and shocking movie ever made. And those okay. were the selling points. Those were the selling points. Oh and God. and it said this, and when you get a ticket, when you buy the ticket, it comes with a vomit bag in case you get sick by what you see. Because some of the people that had pre-screened it had literally thrown up in the theater. So, okay, so we're not, we're not talking about <laughs> How just being over the top because we're pastors. Mm. But Scripture says very, very clearly, Proverbs chapter 4 says, guard your heart above all else, for it is a source of life. Mm. we, we got to be careful of what we're allowing into our homes. And I have this discussion with my children, mm. you know, because we can make the argument as it pertains to our health, just like we talked about. But our emotional well-being is said to be found within the heart because that is the emotional center of our being. So when we consider what we allow in our lives and what we allow to have influence, shouldn't that matter? Man, absolutely. And, and you said a lot, even going back to your, we are talking about conviction earlier with me. And it, it's, it's kind of funny, I guess. I don't know. It's funny to me. Uh, TV shows that I've been watching for years or that my wife and I will sit down and go, okay, we're going to watch this show together. And just about two episodes in or whatever, we'll look at each other and be like, yeah, now, I, I, we shouldn't be watching this. Yeah, and again, it's not holier than thou. No. Look at me. That's not what I mean. I just mean that I'm strongly convicted by the Holy Spirit that I shouldn't be watching this. Yeah. and no one's around. That's it's right. just her and I. Yeah. So there, and of course, God's always present. So, but the only accountability there is for me to God. 
and it's happened, and I'm not going to name the shows because people out there might be watching the shows, and I'm not trying to, but just shows that I would watch and enjoy. And some of them I've been disappointed that the Holy Spirit, because I've been like, man, you know what? I really wanted to see how this turned out, but I guess, you know, it's not to be. But uh, but that takes us right back to what you're talking about. There is so much out there. You and I, uh, you know, friends out, outside of the studio have started this kind of social media journey together. Oh, yeah. Uh, you kind of blazed the trail, and I followed right behind. And and uh, that's it's important because... Because the enemy uses that tool, Aww. so it's important for us to use that tool for kingdom work, and and we do, and we do our best to make messages to get them out there that are encouraging and empowering, yeah. and hopefully lead somebody to a church that can lead them to the Lord. But man, just to get on there to get to what you're trying to do, oh my God. you have to wade through some stuff. Oh man! And I'm like, man, and you know, you think it doesn't matter, but you know, I, we had a message not too long ago about think about what you think about. And because we see things and we think that it doesn't affect us. Oh, yeah. And you could say that I'll, it doesn't affect me. I'm just watching it purely for entertainment purposes. I know that I've said it myself. Um, but then. It's like if, in Playboy for just the yeah, articles. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We watch it and we say, well, that doesn't affect me. It has no effect on me. But let me ask you this to the, to the audience. If, if later on in the day, do you not think about it? Yeah. If did ever in the rest of your day a scene from that show or that movie or a lyric from that song pops into your head, yep. then it has affected you. Yep. It has it has taken spots in your place. It is it has taken up residency in your heart, in your eyes, in your brain. And then you know as well as I do, it, 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 if you feed it, it'll grow. That's right. So we have to be so so careful about what we put in our bodies, of course, but but what we put into our eyes and into our ears, because yeah. if you think that it has no effect on you, yeah. I would say that that is just not true. And the proof is that if you ever again recall it when you're not watching it or listening to it, then you know by that it yeah. has affected you. Well, you, you can't unsee it. Amen. And, 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 and again, we, we, we have uh, teenagers at home and, and they, they, they have that inquisitive nature at that age about, you know, you know, can we watch this or why, or why can't we mm. watch this? And I try to get them to understand, you know, that there's certain things we're just not going to have in our home, period, Amen. because... I'm dad, and I said so. Amen. And then there's other things to where, as the protector and and gatekeeper of our house, I can't right. because I don't feel like that we should invite that opportunity. Mm. Okay, while I believe that, you know, we're we're blood bought and protected by the Lord, I be, I believe that, but I think we can open doors while that while that demonic presence might not be able to. Uh, you know, overpower me, but I'm not going to give them the chance. Right. You know, I'm not going to give them that opportunity to be in my home because it's going to find its way in other ways. And mm -hmm. I think you're exactly right. Uh, even even shows that that I, I my wife and I have watched over the years, I, for whatever reason, and I don't know if it's a maturing process or for what you go back sometimes now and you're watching, and it's like there's something different. It's mm -hmm. like you know what I didn't see that before, yeah. or I didn't pay attention to it before. Or maybe I overlooked it before, but it's like, you know, I tell you the one that hit me and, and I'm like you, I don't want to mention names, but, but I was, I had, there was one on television just within the last couple of weeks and it's, it's been around forever and it's been, it was a comedy, it's the number one show on TV forever, you know, and, and, I, and it was just on because there was like a, a multitude of them on that particular channel. So it's just easier to just leave it on one thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually sitting in my chair just working on some other stuff. And it's just on in the background. So I'm not paying any attention. But my daughter's sitting in the room with me, 15-year-old daughter. Mm. And I, I heard some of the script from mm. the show. And I'm like, you know, I was embarrassed that I had, I was listening to that and my 15 year old daughter was present because it was inappropriate wow. and it wasn't even language. It was the innuendo. It wasn't mm -hmm. like vulgar language or whatever. It was the innuendo of just, you know, do as you want, you know, especially like from sex stuff and things mm -hmm. like that. And it was supposed to be funny, but, but it, it convicted me and I changed the channel yeah. immediately. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm embarrassed mm -hmm. because I don't want, because I don't want her to think, well, like you said earlier, where dad watches it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But what I'm more concerned about, well, if that's funny, then maybe that's okay to do. Right. And, and, and that, that, that's important. Uh, friends, we're going to take our first break really quick, and then we're going to pick back up on this part of the conversation when we come back. Because uh, this, is, this is serious uh, on one side, but it's, but it's reality. Amen. And a lot of people don't really think about because we just get so accustomed to everything, and we That's get right. numb to it after right. a while. That's right. And uh, and I really believe that God has got a message for us here today. So we'll be right back with the next part of Coffee for the Past.
Welcome back, everybody. We are back with Pastor Dale, and we've been having a conversation about where we draw the line. And, and as we ended off, we, we were talking about guarding guarding our hearts and what we what we allow in and why that's important. Um, because things do have influence, and we don't. And I think just as we were talking off air, sometimes we don't think about right. you know because like like you were just saying uh, as we were talking privately. You know, certain things are funny or certainly. And so you don't really, you sometimes miss the actual message because right. there's an innuendo there sometimes. And, and, and But I believe that the conviction comes in. And it's not about God being our buzzkill. He's no. not trying to come in and take all of our fun. Yeah, but he's like, no. that that doesn't help you. That's right. And ultimately doesn't help your witness because you, you are being watched. I mean, we are, whether we realize it or not. You know, believers, I believe, have to protect our hearts and our minds from the influences that lead us away from Christ. Because mm-hmm. after a while, the, the influences are we become numb to certain things and we start overlooking things. And, and we start, well, that's not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, which means that, okay, there's an element of bad there, but you're overlooking it. You know, it's like we're in election season. you got to vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, that means I'm still accepting <laughs> evil. That's right. That's and right. so th- th- this includes setting boundaries with media. Mm. With with conversations with influences that don't align with the gospel message, Paul says in Philippians four, he says, "Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's anything with moral excellence and praiseworthy, think about that." Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so, guarding our hearts and our minds is 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 so important. Um, how, how do we how do we help one understand this is not about this goes deeper than just a mere right or wrong. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's about, it's about influence. And again, it's about the things that we allow to come into our, man, I heard a great message, uh, Tuesday night. I was at a meeting of, of brother pastors and I heard another brother pastor get up there and he talked and he came from Hebrews and he talked about drifting mm. and he told a story about a guy who was at the beach and he was sitting on one of those little inner tube rafts and he fell asleep. And when he woke up, he had drifted so far off the wow. shore that he couldn't see land anymore and he didn't know how to get back. And, and we giggle and think, well, how silly was that? But, you know, that's what we do, oh, right? Yeah. When we allow ourselves to watch these things because they're funny or because they're – and they seem so harmless. Yeah. Because, I mean, in all aspects of sin, if sin didn't look good, we wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah. If we saw every aspect of sin, then we certainly wouldn't engage in it. So what we, it looks – they package it in a way – that it looks harmless, that it looks funny, it looks adorable, or it looks exciting. And so we start to allow it in, whether that's our eye gate or our ear gate, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we watch that show, we listen to that song, we go to that movie, and we think we're fine, but yet we let those things come in, and then we're drifting, and yeah. we're drifting, and we're drifting. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're so far out you can't see land anymore because you've just allowed these things to come into your heart and you become numb to them. You do. And they used to say that to us when we were growing up. Oh, you're watching these violent things. You're going to become numb to violence. And and I remember thinking, whatever. But look at the world now. Oh, yeah. We've become numb to violence. Oh, yeah. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and I'm not blaming it entirely on the video. That's not what I'm not casting the blame there. I'm just saying we have to be careful what we allow to come into our eyes and to our ears. Because it looks pretty. You enjoy it, then you become numb to it, you start to accept it, and then it doesn't even look unusual anymore. Think about the things that we see today that would have blown our grandparents' heads off. Oh, yeah. Literally. I mean, spiritually, physically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Not not literally. And uh, because just them seeing it would have shocked them. Oh, they couldn't believe it. And now we see it, and we don't even bat an eye. Now, well, you know, like I said, you know, we (laughs) you mentioned that, and it made, made me just think while we're sitting here talking, if you go back... And look at the, you know, 40s, 50s, even 60s uh, westerns and even even military movies, John Wayne and stuff like that. Mm. There wasn't a drop of blood nowhere. <laughs> there was the acting of I've been shot, I fell down. Mm. But but there was nothing grotesque about it. It was the it was the idea that this had happened. Right. You know, uh, and John Wayne shot everybody. But mm. but, you know, and, and, and so, but you didn't see anything. And now. If there's not the projectile entering and blood splattering and guts on the wall and stuff like that, it's not acceptable. It's considered boring or whatever. And so, but after a while, people do become numb to those things to where the, okay, we we mentioned the horror thing a while ago. All right. If you go back and look at how that genre started, it was a silent movie called Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. 
all right, back in like like 1911 or something right. like that, all right? right? Not a word spoken, mm-hmm. but it's the, it's the, it was the mystique, and it was the this and that. And then, of course, Bela Lugosi in 31 did Dracula. Right. You go back and look at it again, not a drop of blood, not, 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 a, not and I'm not saying that I'm, we're not going to argue the rights or wrongs of those things, but I'm saying we've evolved mm. to the point that we're now the the casual person would never look at that. They're right. like, oh, well, that's not that's boring. That's boring. That's, you know, yeah. and so we 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 do become numb, and people can make that argument all they want. I know, as a police officer, uh, when I spent all those years on the road, it's real, mm-hmm. man. When when you have dealt with death, death and dismemberment and all this other stuff, after a while, your heart becomes so hard to where you walk in to another horrifying scene. You know, and I don't want to get oh, I don't want to get over the top or grotesque here on the air, but but I mean I've seen some stuff that I wish I'd never seen. Right. And it's like okay, and you just yeah. go on, yeah. and, and and so so what I found for me is when I when I came to know the Lord, the change in me was I went from that hard steel, nothing can penetrate. You know, I don't have any feelings about anything because you become so numb to that mm. stuff to where. Now, man, a you know, cat food commercial makes me cry. I mean, right, it's right. like, you know, but, but as believers, though, I think we have to avoid certain situations. Right. I think certain, even certain behaviors that might cause not just us to stumble, but others to stumble, like you mentioned earlier, because of us. And, and, and it may cause them to misunderstand our faith. I, I, I think one of the painful things that I hear sometimes, well, if that's what being a believer is, I don't want anything to do with it. Mm. Or if they're going to make it, I don't want anything to do with it. You know, Even if we personally feel confident in our freedom, I can do whatever I want. Mm. I think we have to be mindful. The first Thessalonians 5 and 2 says, stay away from every kind of evil. Amen. Now, when we think about that, Stay away from every kind of evil. That means I have to be intentional. Right. I've got to be mindful of what it is. So while we can't live under a rock, we can't live under a bubble. Uh, and we get full say, though, as well, to what comes in and out of our house and in and out of our lives. Just like I mentioned the billboard while I go, I can't stop that billboard. All right. I'm right. driving down the road. That's there. But when I get home and I close my door, I have full say over what's in that house. That's right. Okay. If something comes on television that's objectionable, I can change the channel. I get to do that. Right. What kind of stumbling blocks, though, do we find that many, maybe even within our congregation of people that we know, that they are struggling with today when it comes to things that could harm their witness that they don't really think about? Wow. Well, I think a lot of it comes back again to what we were talking about with the stuff that they watch on television. Uh, social media, the predominance of, of social media today is, is insane. Just yeah. it's everywhere. People our age have TikToks and YouTubes and Instagrams yeah. and, and a lot of that stuff. And, and again, drifting. You start with one type of video or, or whatever, and then you drift to another and another and another. And then next thing in a rabbit hole. And I've gone down you know, the, the flat earth rabbit hole on YouTube myself and then lost half a day trying to oh, figure yeah. out where Antarctica is. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the point <laughs> is we go down these rabbit holes and then we, you know, we're just not sure. And then people are just bombarded with it from commercials yeah. to yeah. TV to oh, music yeah. to social media. And like you see, even with that that billboard you saw, that's twice we talked about it. And I'm not casting aspersions no, on you. No, they That billboard did exactly what it was designed Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. But when we are at home in our in our studies, in our rooms, in our, on our couches, we don't have complete control of a thought that pops into our mind. Right. But we can choose what to let go of yeah. and what to let our minds dwell on. Yeah. And we have to, like the verse you shared earlier, we have to dwell our minds on what is good, what is holy, yeah. what is pure, what is right. Let our minds focus on those things. And when those thoughts pop into our heads... You know what? You know, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm right. not going to think about that. Let me think about something good. And then and then you talked a little bit about freedom, and freedom's a big word. And people like to say that, oh, well, if you're a Christian, you can't do these things. Yeah. And they focus so much on what you can't do. There is nothing more freeing than knowing Jesus as your Savior. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, sin is what it is, and it looks like a good time. But, you know, when they show you the party, they don't show you the next morning with the hangover. They don't show you the results of the bad decisions right. that you made yeah. in your so-called freedom. Yeah. And I'm doing the quotation fingers for those following along at home. <laughs> for your so-called freedom that you had to make bad decisions. That's and, right. of course, God's given us the freedom to make bad decisions. Yeah. But he's also given us the freedom that we don't have to anymore. That's it. That's it. And I think that's where we, we do. You know, I, I, I Looking here at another passage in First Corinthians, it says, "Be careful 
that this right of yours mm. in no way becomes a stumbling block to the weak. That's right. And so, so I, I think you're right. A lot of people wrestle with, and they bring us those questions, you know, can I do this? Can I do that? Well, the answer, and Paul even says this in 1 Corinthians, yes. Yeah, no condemnation. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. In fact, he says all things are permissible. All things are lawful. Mm. But, <laughs> but not beneficial. Not all <laughs> things are beneficial, and and I think that is so important. Um, uh, the first message I heard about that was was my friend Nikita Koloff. He he was preaching years ago, and he used that, and it stuck with me mm. so long now. Over all the I was twenty years ago when I heard that, it stuck with me for all these years because that's true. You know, just like what you just said, you know, the, even the believer that, that struggles with what can I do, you can do anything you want. Right. You shouldn't do a lot of stuff, right. but you can do whatever you want. But the the, the thing is, though, is are, am I mindful of what it costs? Amen. You know, am I looking at the, I use the illustration all the time, I tell our, our people at church, you know, you can go into to Walmart or, or Target or whatever, wherever your preference is to shop, you know, Macy's, wherever. And there's not one thing in that store you can't have. Not one thing. As long as you can pay Willing for it. Willing to pay for it. Amen. <laughs> and yeah. so that, that's the thing. is, And God gives us that ability. You can do whatever you want to do. But you've got to understand there's a cost attached. Mm. Whether it is a, a literal you know, tag attached to it or whether it is a spiritual. But there's a, there is a consequence and a cost Amen. to every decision made. Uh, like you said, going out and having a good time. Go have a good time. But be mindful of where that's going to lead you. Is that going And, and, and be mindful, especially as the believer, as that influencing or hurting anybody else right. you know i can go out and, and and drink and do this and do that whatever and i'm not i'm not i'm not condemning anyone who who chooses to do those things but rather are you mindful of what that is doing to your witness because if it's affecting and even more so preventing someone from coming to christ mm. then you're going to be held accountable for that that's right you know it, it, a lot of times we understand the fact that because we're freed from certain eternal consequences doesn't mean you're freed from the temporary consequences no. doesn't you know choices have you know consequences decisions have consequences things that we make yes we know that our eternal you know is secure we have eternal security but it doesn't free you from the choices that you make down here yeah. and the reflection that you are and you know I talked this morning before I came here I was talking about leadership and a lot of people like to say well I'm not a leader are you sure yeah. Because are you sure there's no one looking at you as a leader? Because if you're living the life that God's called us to live, then I believe there's probably somewhere, someone within your circle of influence, maybe that you're not even aware of, that's looking at you as a leader. Yeah. And and you may not have asked to be a leader. You may not even desire to be a leader. But just in knowing Jesus is our Savior, we're put in a leadership role Absolutely. because we're supposed to be leading others to the gospel. We're supposed to be leading others to Christ. And that doesn't necessarily mean jumping up on a rock and preaching. No. It can be just how you live, making a good decision. That's right. We know when you have every right to react a certain way, choosing to, like you said earlier, be intentional yeah. about how you act and what you think and what you allow into your, you know, I'm not going to go see that movie. I'm going to go see this one. Why? You know, maybe somebody's watching. Maybe I don't want somebody to see me in there. Or maybe because it's just the right thing to do. That's right. No, you know? no, you're right. And that's very, very valuable. Uh, and, I, and I hope somebody heard that about being a leader. You, you may not have a title. Right. Or a position in your company as as the CEO or whatever like that, but if you've got kids at home, you're a leader. Amen. If you have a, a, a circle of people in your cubicle or wherever you are, you you are a leader because they are watching you. Mm. You know, if you don't if you don't believe that, man, man, I learned that lesson the hard way when I was a young dad. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 realize, of course, this was my years before coming to know the Lord. I'm on the road, you know. And my little girl's at home, man. She's three years old, two years old, you know. And she's now not that I was living in a, in an inappropriate way, but I probably didn't have the best language and the different stuff like that. And I don't, I say that stuff with 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 great shame at this point in life. But but you know, you don't think about it right. until I heard her say it. Mm. And then I'm like, holy cow, that's oh, not that's yeah. not good, you know. And, and, and but it's things like that for for the person that is saying, well, what I do doesn't matter. It absolutely matters, right. you know. And, and and I think even doubly matters 
if you call yourself a believer and follower of Christ. That's right. Because people are watching. Mm -hmm. And again, you're not trying to create that pious, I'm holier than thou, I'm better than you type, you know, I never make a mistake. Because I think what happens, and you, you mentioned earlier, even, even pastors that have fallen, I think what happens is, to, to put it in, a, in an old saying that my mother would have said, sometimes you can get too big for your britches. That's right. And, That's right. And, and, and we have seen some that have elevated themselves to a place of great mm. piety. That's right. Uh, and, and their fall, as Scripture says, was great. Right. It was mighty, like the house on the sand. It <laughs> fell right. and it was bad. Um, but you did that. That's right. You you put yourself up there, you know, uh, of of you know, I'm way up here, and so I, I've I've reached this place of of eleva elevated status that mm -hmm. I can't mess up. Well, that's exactly when it, that's when the enemy knows. Okay, that's let right. me let me show you just what you can. Amen. Do. Amen. You know, I mean, really, I just got through teaching this past week on Peter, and and not not that Peter was arrogant or or, or prideful, but but he he was convicted of his faith, mm. and Jesus told him, he said, you know, I, I get that. You know, you're the rock, right? Not the Dwayne Johnson one, but but the, <laughs> but but uh, he said, but before the night's over, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, I'd never mm -hmm. do that. Well, what happened? Yeah. And on that third one, when the rooster started going off, we could almost sense the sick feeling in his gut. Yeah. And then when the post-resurrected Jesus met with Peter, he didn't call him Peter, did he? He called him Simon. That's right. Can you imagine going from being the rock to now Jesus? Jesus, who gave you the name, he gave it, yeah. looks at you and says, Simon, do you love me? Yeah. Three times. Yeah. The third time. Did that not rip Peter's? It rips my heart out thinking about yep. Peter, who clearly loved the Lord. Absolutely. He was just a, a sinful human like we all are. And Peter clearly loved the Lord. So to have Jesus come to him and no longer call him Peter, but to say, Simon, do you love me? Yeah. Do you even, do you have any love for me? Not only do you unconditionally love me, do you even brotherly love me? Right. You know, and it, uh, you know, just, but again, he was, again, preparing Peter for what he would do. Absolutely. And of course, Peter would, you know, go on to, to live a great life for the Lord. But yeah, there's, there, there's so much there. Even with leadership, I think a lot of that is prideful. It's really easy to get puffed up with pride. Oh, we all know that pride cometh before the fall. Pride is one of the great, great sins going all the way back, you know, even it, into the garden. It's how uh, God doesn't want you to become like him. That's right. You know, and in our pride, we feel like we deserve to and. You know, but so pride is always, always a big problem. But I think a lot of it with leadership is, yes, in some way, shape or form, if you know Jesus says you're savior, you're called to lead. But we have to understand what leadership is. Leadership's not about power. Leadership's about responsibility. That's right. Which takes us back to where we draw the line. Because ultimately, that's all leadership is, is responsibility. Yep. You are not, you're not in charge of them people. You're responsible for them people. Absolutely. And when you start to look at it that way, that changes the entire perspective of everything. It's not about telling me what to do. It's about you being responsible for what they do. That's right. When you don't even get to control what they do, no, right. but yet you're responsible for feeding and leading and, and guiding and, and doing everything you can to help them to make good decisions. So you have to know where to draw the line. Because if you don't know, you like the old country song, right? If you don't stand, you got to stand for something you'll fall for or anything. you'll fall for anything. That's you right. got to know where to draw the line in your own life, you know, as a church, as a pastor, just as a man. Or, or a woman out there that knows Jesus, you got to know where to draw the line and what, what you'll allow, what you'll accept, what you'll condone, and what you just will not. That's right. Well, I think, you know, too, when we look at, especially those of us that have been around for a while and, and maybe maybe walk with the Lord for a, a relatively good amount of time, um, I believe that as our as our time goes on, our responsibility grows greater. Amen. Uh, wh whether we're holding the office as a pastor or whether we're just uh, one of the one of the senior members of our congregation, people look to you for example. They look to you for guidance. They look Amen. to you for you know all of those different things. And if and if you are not guarding your witness and you're not guarding your hearts and minds and all the different things like that, I mean it, those things are so important. You know, and, and I think that we we so easily get distracted. But what we have to understand is, Paul, and Paul talked about this, is we're not in the same place. Not all of us are in the same place. That's right. You know, the person that got saved last night uh, and, and, and a guy that's been around for 30 years is in two different places. That's right. But that puts the person, the, the 30 year veteran person in a in a much greater role of responsibility to help that other person see, wait a minute, this is a journey. And, and, and while, you know, you're not there yet, I can I can mold and guide you along mm -hmm. the way. Uh, 
by showing you, you know, that life is real, man. Right. And, you know, and I think that we miss that sometimes because we we tend to we tend to look at that young person that's just getting started, you know, and find all the faults, or they did this wrong, that wrong, or they're not dressing right, or this. That. Well, it's not about molding them into what you want them to be. That's right. It's about it's about allowing them to be on the potter's wheel. And being developed into what God wants him to be, you know, because every every person has their own story. Every person has their own journey. And 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 while the young person that's got his hat on backwards and two sizes of earrings too big and tattoos, that's not for me. Right. But if he can reach the people in his dynamic that that's I can't, true. man, I'm I'm I want to I'm going to be in his corner all Amen. day long. Amen. You know, so protecting our hearts and our minds and and our witness is so so important. Friends, we're going to take our second break. We'll be right back with the last part of coffee. Welcome back, everybody. Coffee with the Pastor. Always great to be with you. Um, we've been talking about drawing lines and protecting our hearts and minds and our witness and stuff like that. Uh, Pastor, believers have to set boundaries to avoid temptation. Mm. Okay, because temptation, and again, when we hear that word, we almost instantly move toward the, 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 the flesh stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about, you know, all kinds of different things in a moral compass. That's right. But temptation can be pie. <laughs> it sure could. Man. Your, your good friend Nikita Koloff told me once, Dale, you can have a donut, just don't have 12. Don't have 12. And, uh, but that's right. You know, everybody's temptation <laughs> is right. different, right? And so so everybody, and all of us do, we, we all should, and I believe that we do if we're honest, we all know what our weaknesses are. That's right. Okay, I know what mine is, mm -hmm. and I know what I you can't even teeter with it. There's no playing with it. You have to leave it alone. It's important to draw the line before reaching a place where sin, temptation, whatever becomes enticing. Mm. In other words, you, you don't play with it because you know. Uh, we, we have to know where the edge of the cliff is to avoid to avoid it. That's right. Because if not, you're going to fall in. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in Arizona for many years, and we lived right outside the Grand Canyon. I literally, literally right there on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. And every single week, at, and the local paper came out on Wednesday afternoon every week, um, there was at least four, between four and six people every week that fell in. Every single week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some even in vehicles because they would see how, because there's no guardrails there. You can just go up to it. And so, so if you've never been there, it's quite, quite the sight to see. And you think, well, how, and again, I don't mean this crude, but, but how dumb could that possibly be? Here's the thing. If you go up there and visit, and you sit and watch, you'll see exactly why it happens. People want to see just how close can I get. Mm. I want to get that great camera shot, or I want to get mm. this, or how close can I get. That's what we find in life when people are toying with things that they really are saying, man, like you, are, like you mentioned earlier, well, it looks good. Mm. Well, if we go back to creation, in the story of creation, it said that what was given was pleasing to the eye. The tree was beautiful and it looked delicious. Yeah, so... I, how many things have been pleasing to the eye that's gotten you in trouble before? Man, <laughs> how much time you got? Uh, we're gonna need. We're, we're gonna go over time uh, yeah. for sure. And uh, but that's that's it, man. There's so many things, and a lot of you can get to the fleshly stuff. You know, some things wouldn't bother me. I would not have any problem going into a bar and meeting with somebody and and, and sharing the gospel with them and sitting there all night long. And not having a drink would right. bother me in Absolutely the police. Right. They're with you. Because that's not my struggle. That's not my temptation. But there are certain other places where I absolutely cannot set foot that's right. because that is my temptation. That's my that's my weakness. That's, that's right. something that I've struggled with now. Praise God, He's given me the strength through the Holy Spirit to overcome it and defeat it yeah. and the ability to recognize it. Yeah. So I know not to play with it. You know, fire is great. It'll keep you warm in yeah. the wintertime. Yeah. But if you get too close to it, it'll burn you. That's exactly you right. You know, and it's uh it's just a matter of not understanding what you're convicted by. And then, you know, God tells us there won't be any temptation that we can't overcome. That's right. But that means we got to take the exit before we get there. That's right. And he's going to provide us with one. And, you know, once you understand what you struggle with, once you understand what, uh, what, what your weakness, for lack of a better term, is, then you have to understand that God's going to allow you to overcome it. But then you can't tempt it. You can't see how close you can get to the edge. You can't. 
can't play with it at all. Sometimes, you know, sin, when you recognize it, we just need to leave it alone because it's such a dangerous road to even start to go down. Absolutely. Well, that's the thing is if we don't recognize those things or we convince ourselves, you mentioned the bar, you know, those other things, uh, and we know what our we know what our temptations are, where our weaknesses are. But when we convince ourselves, well, I got it now. Mm. Just one little bit won't hurt. That's right. One little bit is all it takes. That's it. You know, uh, I, I was I was unfortunate in my in my career as an officer that I we had two two separate occasions that we had to uh, clean up the aftermath of a game of Russian roulette. Mm. Okay, and now, now people hear that and they think, oh man, that's not re-. no no, it's it's very real and people are very very foolish to play that sure. game. Um, and you think, well, why, why would anybody do that? Well, it's it's it's, it's the it's the, the enticement of the all oh, you know the the thrill and the the maybes and the this and that. But it only took one bullet to finish the game, yeah. you know, and two young people's lives were, were gone. Mm. We, we, we think of temptation, and again, we, we immediately go to, to, to the different moral compasses in life. And, and, and while those are probably the bigger majority of that, but a lot of people are tempted by a lot of things. Mm. Um, in the book of James, it says, but each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil mm. desire. That's right. So I'm looking to fulfill something that I'm drawn to. It's mm-hmm. something that I like. And again, we can. what happens is, and we talked about this through the show, is getting numb to things like that. But what happens in the, in the numbing process is we find ways to justify it. That's right. And I deserve it. Mm, it's okay. Amen. I'm not hurting anybody. That's right. And we and, and, and the devil's like, yeah, he's just cheering mm, you right along. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I I was famous for that before I was saved as well. I would tell my wife, I'm not hurting anybody but me. Yeah. I used to say that, man. I I wish I could have her on tell you all about it. And uh, but yeah, but that's just a lie. It's yeah. just a flat out lie you know, it is. because people are watching, people are seeing. It affects your attitude. It affects the way you relate to others. Uh-huh. It affects the way you relate to your kids and your wife. And oh, you're in a good mood today because you were able to meet that temptation, or you're in a bad mood today because you weren't. Um, and it's it's just a flat out lie, and it's one of the many lies that the that the devil tells. And and you said it only takes a little bit to start you down that road, man. And it is such a dangerous path to be on. And yeah, it's the evil within us. Like before we know Jesus is our savior, we have that emptiness inside of us and we all try to fill it with something. Whether, you know, in my past life, it was, it was drugs. It was girls. It was that kind of thing. I tried to fill that hole. Mm -hmm. And for others, it's alcohol for others. It's work for others. It can be exercise. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so many things that people try to fill that hole with ambition, money, and we spend our lives trying to fill a hole with things that it will never fill it that's right. until we come to know Jesus. But then when we do come to know Jesus, we understand that he's the only thing that's ever going to fill that hole. Amen. doesn't mean those other desires disappear, though. They don't. They hang around just beneath the surface and wait for us to, to tap into them, for us to allow them to peek their head up a mm-hmm. little bit. And that's why we can't, like you said a moment ago, we can't, can't play with it. Can't play no, with well, it. because when we do, we, we lower our guard. Right. We do, and, and I think in 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 a maybe in a in a in a, in a certain way, we we kind of take off some of our spiritual armor. Mm. You know, this 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 breastplate of righteousness. It's a really hot today. Mm. It, it's a little heavy today. Wow, amen. I want to just set it off because I got it now. That's exactly what the enemy wants you to think. Okay, mm. because now, well, it's not that big of a deal. I hadn't looked at that in a long time, or this or that. You know, and again, it. it we're not trying to guilt anybody. That's just fact. That's right. And if we lower our guard and we and, and we ultimately lower our standard to where what we did have strength and clarification on, but now it's like we muddy the water just a little bit. We we heard our own testimony. That's we right. heard our own walk with the Lord. Not that we can't be restored, but but God, you know, Paul says that we don't have a license to keep doing stuff. That's just right. because you can doesn't mean that you should. Mm. And there, there's a big variation of that understanding the. Again, I think if we take serious our witness, and I keep going back to that, because witness is not our words. Witness is what people see. That's right. And, you know, again, we we'll go back to my, my days on the road. The witness was, was not what somebody told me. It's what they saw. That's that right. was the actual accounting Amen. of what happened. Because their words could be mm-hmm. maybe not right. What, did, what really, really happened? Well, when someone sees, sees, literally sees our witness, it's our walk. 
It's mm. our way of living. It's how we walk out our faith. We can, we can become very articulate in our speech, That's especially right. those of us that are constantly speaking. I mean, right. I, I speak literally every single day <laughs> in some form or fashion, whether, right. it's, whether it's a 30-second TikTok, whether it's a 20-minute teaching video, whether it's teaching in a, in a, in a pulpit or from a chair. But so so I'm seven days a week, I am never away from it. So you can become very, very good at that. Amen. But if your words don't match your life, a lot of people are going to say, you don't, you don't mean it. And that's why we find in the world today the word, sadly, the word hypocrite attached to the church mm. so often. So our witness matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said it earlier, uh, and I don't even think you meant to, but when you said you show them. You're talking about people, and we we can tell them whatever, and we you know we can tell people stuff, and we should we should share the gospel, we should share scripture, we should tell them Jesus loves them, we should tell them we love them, but it matters so much more what you show them. Absolutely, you can tell somebody you love them all you want if you show them something different, they're going to believe what you show them. Mm -hmm. And there's another aspect that that we just uh, need to touch on too. We talk about nobody's going to see it. A temptation. I'm going to engage in this temptation. I'm going to engage in this sin, and nobody's going to know. But here's the thing. You know. That's right. And what is the enemy? And, of course, we understand God knows. That goes without saying. But what does the enemy love to do more, almost more than anything else is tell you that now you're not worthy to go out and do these things Absolutely. because of what you did when nobody was around. That's right. Nobody knows you did it, but you know. And what does that do? That creates a doubt it does. in ourselves. It cre creates shame. And we become ashamed of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Who am I to stand up and tell anybody about God when when I'm alone, I do X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Who am I? God can't use me yeah. because I'm still dirty, because I'm still this, because yeah. I'm not pure, because I don't tell the truth, because I give in when nobody's looking. So then shame and doubt and guilt creep in. Nobody ha nobody even has to know. Yeah. But God knows you know and the enemy knows. And if he can use it to get his hooks in you with shame and guilt and doubt, that makes you ineffective. Absolutely. And next thing you know, you're standing up there on Sunday and you don't even feel worthy to share the gospel or or maybe not even to that extent. It, at your work, yeah. when you got that buddy across the way, you don't even feel worthy to tell him about Jesus because you don't feel like you're the genuine article yeah. because you've allowed yourself. So even when it's just us alone with our temptation, it matters, man. It always matters. And we got to draw a line. We you do. know, we got to draw a line for yeah. ourselves, for our family, for our church, for our friends. You know, we got to draw a line. Absolutely. And I think and along those lines, as we wrap up, um, drawing the line for yourself. That's right. And that's not a selfish statement. That's mm -hmm. like if I'm going to be, at, you know, the Bible talks about being an effectual witness. If, we're, mm -hmm. if, we're, if I'm going to have effect, if I'm truly going to impact my home, right. my children, my family, my community, my church, you know, or maybe my place of work, where, wherever you are in life, uh, being on a platform like this, if I'm going to influence the people that are listening, being on the social media, and I think that's right, and I, um, and I know we're getting close on our time, but you know, we 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 go into that world um, knowing that we're you know we're only one of a million other channels that that somebody could see. But mm -hmm. if for that thirty seconds or that minute and a half or whatever, if for, if somebody could just stop there, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you the blessings that have been for me is as is, is you know seeing that you know almost ten thousand people have liked something that I put out or commented on something. That's like, okay, that's that does something. And again, that's not a pride right. thing. But that's like if that many people are just, if they just heard, only heard about Jesus today, only in those 30 seconds, right. then that, that, was, that, was, that was a pretty cool thing. So, Pastor, great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for a great conversation. As always, it's always, always fun to have you here with us. Tell everybody real quick about Cliffdale, and then uh, we're going to wrap things up. Oh, beautiful, man. Yeah, thanks. And, and, and just real quick, the TikTok thing, the best ones when you get a note from somebody that says they were going through something. Yeah. And whatever God gave you that day, address whatever they were going through, Absolutely. man. That makes like, well, you know what? Okay, I will keep doing this. Absolutely. But uh, hey, I'm Pastor Dale Pascal, Cliffdale Community Church. We're at 7763 Cliffdale Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, just off of Fort Liberty or Fort Bragg, if you still want to stick to that. But uh, 7763 Cliffdale Road, we have service every Sunday morning at 10. We got something going on every night of the week. You can always check us out at cliffdale.org. And if you want to follow me, Pastor Dale, on TikTok, or Cliffdale Community Church on Instagram, 
And uh, but just Andy, thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. It's always touches my heart every time that you see any value in having me on, and it just Absolutely. is such a blessing to be with you, man, and just such a blessing to to call myself your friend. Amen. I agree with that 100. percent I love it, man. And you know, we we uh, we begrudgingly entered into the social media <laughs> world, but uh, but I'm gonna tell you what, man. Uh, I've actually had a lot of fun with it, right? And uh, and, and I think that uh, and I, I appreciate the stuff you put out and. And, and some of our other brothers that we know that put things out. But you know what? Uh, we've been given this giant platform. And while many use it for erroneous and bad, bad things, mm. I believe that we can go back to Scripture again. What God, well, you know, what you meant for evil, God can use for good. Amen. And I, and I, I believe Amen. that. So uh, thanks again for everybody today for listening. Thanks to all of our fellow pastors. Uh, friends, remember, e- even in the pulpit, we've got lines too. Make sure they are solid and make sure they are firm. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Lord willing, we'll return next week with another time of great conversation and prayerfully continue to help someone come to know Christ in a little bit stronger way. Blessings to all of you. I am your host, Pastor Andy. This is Coffee with the Pastor, where Jesus is good all the way to the last drop. You've been listening to Coffee with the Pastor with your host, Andy McDaniel. Connect and learn more when you visit the podcast page at Christian1057.com. And join us each week for Coffee with the Pastor on Christian 105.7.